Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video. For the scent of the day, I put the rest of this ice pound cake candle from Walmart into my wax melt warmer. I like to use up every bit of candle, so this I'm on the last bit of this one for sure. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. I would love for you to take a moment and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you will never miss anything interesting. And also I do post every single day on Instagram and Reddit. So if you're a person that likes updated content, be sure to go follow me over on there so you'll see everything new that I post. If you happen to be new to my Sunday videos, they're pretty simple. First, we do a tutorial and then we do an in-depth review on the palette of the week. And for this week's palette of the week, we're doing this revolution one and it's called Birds of Paradise. And I'm really excited to share this palette with you guys because I've been wanting this palette for so, so long. And I finally got it when it went on sale. So now I have it and I've been really enjoying it. Here's what the inside color story looks like if you're interested before we get started on using it. This is what we're gonna be working with today. It is indeed a very bright rainbow palette. So let's move right on into the tutorial. Now, before I start any eye look, I always like to do the prep steps, which is priming and tight lining. But today I'm not gonna tight line and I'm gonna use my sample beauty eye base to prime. And one of the steps I accidentally forgot to include in my pictorial from yesterday is the first step that I actually did. And that's to take an angled liner brush and to go into the shade called Cockatoo. And with this shade, we're gonna line under the entire eyebrow with this. Now for the next step to just take a flat detail brush and we're gonna go into a shade called Take Flight and we're gonna do this on the outer half of the eye. So I'm gonna make a line up the center of my eye first. Maybe ending right about there. And with that same shade, I'm just going to fill in this outer portion. Now with that same exact brush, we're going into a shade called Adventure, and we're gonna do the same thing, but to the inner portion of the eye. Now just take your favorite blending brush, you can use whichever kind you want for this, and then go into a shade called Macaw first, and just lightly dip your blending brush in. And I like to tap it off, just so my brush looks about this much coated. And then we're gonna take this around the blue section. Now dust your brush off and then go into the shade called Island and coat it just about the same amount. And we're gonna take this around the purple section. Now for this next part, I like to use a silicone applicator, but you can use whatever you want. And we're gonna go into the glitter shade, the blue glitter shade. And you see the seam down the center where the, both the colors meet? We're gonna cover that in blue glitter. So I know glitter's hard to capture on camera, but here's what it kind of should look like, a little bit like that. After you're done with the glitter, go into your waterline with a lavender waterliner. And then I'm just taking a larger eyeliner brush and I'm going to the shade Toucan Play. And I'm gonna start all the way at my inner corner and bring this all the way to my outer corner. For my inner corner, I'm going into the shade called Exotic. Now these shades are kind of hard to pick up on a brush, so you kind of got to work at it. And I'm just going to put this right in my inner corner. Okay, let me put on some mascara and I'll be right back to talk about this. So here's the finished look and it's definitely my kind of style. I'm all about the glitter, so whenever I could kind of incorporate that into a look, I'm always happy with that. But let me know in the comments what you think about it and if it's something that you would ever consider trying. But let's move right into the review. 
So again, here's the packaging. It's like an aluminum casing packaging and I love these kind because they're extra protective of the fragile shadows inside. So I'm all for this. And when you open it up, you get a nice mirror inside. And then you get 18 shadows in here weighing 1.1 gram each, which is a little bit above an average amount of shadow per pan. In here, you get 13 mattes, three shimmers, and two press glitters. I know Revolution palettes can be really hit or miss, but this particular matte formula was great. I think it's perfect for layering and gradients, but they were very true to tone. And they remain that way even when I used them. I had no issue whatsoever trying to build them up to reach maximum potential. And as far as the formula goes, they're more of a buildable formula, so you're able to control it a lot better. Now let's talk about the three shimmers in here. You can probably pick out the shimmers in this palette just by looking at them because of how much I try to dig my brush into them. These shimmers are that very squishy, smushy, putty-like formula. They feel like a cream almost. I do appreciate that each one has a different base pigment making them multifunctional, but these shimmers do not work with a brush. You really have to use your finger with them and I'm really not a finger type shadow applicator person. So that drives me nuts. So I really try to dig my brush in there and coat it as best as I can. But as far as just easily trying to get them to apply to your brush, they, they will not. And then, like I said, there are two pressed glitters and they are both right here. And I am personally not opposed to pressed glitters being in palettes, but they just have to be the right formula. And I do appreciate these in particular because they are self-adhesive. They both have kind of a sticky base to them. So you don't need a glitter adhesive or a glitter glue to get them to stick to your eye. They already do that on their own. Although the glitter particles are quite large in them, they do apply uniformly. Now the glitters work fine with a brush or you can use them with your finger, but I find that they work best with a silicone applicator. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up a picture of some swatches I took from this palette so you can see how every shade looks swatched out. Now, are you ready for the routine data check? Cause that's what we're getting into. The first thing I always like to look for is, is it a clean formula? And this is not clarified as being a clean formula. The next thing is, is it cruelty free? And yes, this is cruelty free. In fact, it is PETA certified cruelty free. The next thing is, is it vegan? And yes, this palette is also vegan. And the last thing I like to locate and evaluate the expiration date. So I found that it has a 12 month PAO and it's located on the back of the actual palette itself. So now let's get into my favorite part of the video, which is the cost evaluation. If you went out and bought this palette as it is today, you can find it at a lot of different retailers and it does cost $15. Breaking that down a little bit, it comes to 83 cents per shade. And breaking that down a bit further, it comes to 76 cents per gram. So comparing this palette to similar products offered on the market, it has an excellent price per shade. And additionally, this palette has an affordable cost per gram as compared to other palettes that I've previously reviewed. So for the last part of this video, let's get into my recommendation. I did get a lot of kickback in the pans with this, but I didn't experience any actual physical fallout on my face. But I made sure to always tap my brush off after I dipped it in the shadow. So that could have played a part in that for sure. Now, if you're like me and you've had your eye on this palette for what seems like forever, I totally and completely recommend this. And there are three reasons why. The first reason is because it's very easy to work with. Some Makeup Revolution palettes are just horrible and some are really good. And this one is part of their Forever Flawless range. And this range of palettes in these metal containers are actually really good. So this is part of their good formula and I've been really happy with how it works. My second reason is because this has vibrant exotic hues in it. It is a rainbow palette, but it's a more exotic version of a rainbow palette. So I just thought that was really neat and I don't have another palette like this in my collection. And my third point is that even if you're a person that doesn't like pressed glitters, these aren't gonna get all over your palette and destroy it because they have that self-adhesive quality to them. So they kind of just stay in their little corner up there and do their thing unless you wanna use them. And other than that, they keep out of all the other shadows and your palette stays relatively clean. So guys, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you did like it, please give me a giant thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, hit that thumbs down button. And until next time, bye. For the sun of the day, I put the, for the sun of the day, I put the rest of this. Bean, beanie.
and we're going to, and with this shade, we're going to line un under the end. But let's, but let's move right into the tutorial. And then the two press, and then now the glitters work fine with a bra. Now I'm going to quickly throw up some, now I'm, now I'm quickly going to, 